the Defense Supply Center Richmond in Chesterfield County, Virginia, has served as an important part of the supply chain for the United States military since 1942. But the land that makes up that installation has had thousands of years of occupation and hundreds of years of recorded history. Located in Virginia's coastal plain southwest of the James River, this area was once home to Native Americans who occupied the site for thousands of years. One significant archaeological site has been identified near Parker Pond, which was once a natural spring. Professional archaeologists were able to date the site back to about 6,000 years ago from the spear points and potsherds that were found. At the close of the prehistoric period, the Virginia coastal plain was heavily populated by Algonquin-speaking groups that were organized into chiefdoms. In 1607, when Jamestown was founded, English settlers encountered the largest chiefdom in what is now Virginia, named the Powhatan Chiefdom after its leader, Powhatan. These Algonquin tribes hunted, fished, farmed, and traded goods with both English settlers and other Native Americans. Once the Jamestown colony became established, it was only a matter of time before English settlement moved farther inland along the James River. The King of England granted Thomas Sheffield 2,300 acres, including the land that would eventually become the Defense Supply Center Richmond. The encroachment of Europeans increased tensions with the Powhatan tribes, which sometimes led to violent outbreaks. Thomas Sheffield and his wife Rachel were killed during one such outbreak known as the Powhatan Uprising of 1622. In 1634, Seth Ward acquired the Sheffield property and renamed it Auburn Chase. During his tenure, the plantation system firmly established itself in Virginia as a cultural and economic institution. In 1797, Richard Augustus Gregory purchased the land and renamed it New Oxford he began construction of the house now known as Bellwood. The Bellwood House is typical of late 18th and early 19th century houses erected by Virginia planters. At the time of construction, Richard Gregory was one of the wealthiest men in Chesterfield County, and his house, valued at over $4,000, was one of the most expensive in Chesterfield County. Gregory's agricultural success was in large part due to his use of slave labor, and by 1790, half of the Chesterfield County's population was African American. Gregory was also an investor and shareholder in the Manchester and Petersburg Turnpike, which opened in 1824 and eventually became Jefferson Davis Highway. The 20-mile road, which bisected his property, was one of the few paved roads in Chesterfield County. When Richard Gregory died in 1844, he was buried next to his wife Elizabeth in the Gregory Family Cemetery. The land passed down through the Gregory family to Lavinia Gregory Anderson and her husband Augustus Drury. They renamed the farm Auburn Chase. During the Civil War, Augustus Drury played an important role in the defense of Chesterfield County and the larger Richmond area. At the outbreak of the war, Drury and some neighboring farmers constructed a fort on a bluff along the eastern edge of his property along the James River. Captain Augustus Drury, commanding the Southside Artillery, led the construction of earthworks and barracks, dug artillery emplacements, and mounted three large seacoast guns in the fort. Known as Drury's Bluff or Fort Darling, the small fort was used to prevent Union boats from traveling up the James River to Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. Completed during the first month of the war, Drury's Bluff remained active throughout the entire war and was the scene of two battles. In May 1864, Drury's house at Auburn Chase was used by General P.G.T. Beauregard as his headquarters during the campaigns in Petersburg and Richmond. The house served as an important meeting place. General Braxton Bragg, General Beauregard, and Jefferson Davis met at Drury's house to strategize on the defense of Richmond. The discussion was heated and with little consensus. 
A letter from Margaret Thomas Wilson Gregory to her cousin documented some of the skirmishes near Drury's house. Because of the fighting, Meg, who was nine months pregnant, was forced to leave her own home and sought refuge at Auburn Chase. She reported, That night, my baby was born. General Beauregard made the house I was in his headquarters. I thought I was safe there. The day of the fight, my baby was only a few hours old. The Yankees tried to shell Mr. Drury's house. Following the Civil War, Augustus and Lavinia Drury deeded Auburn Chase to James B. Jones, who had served in the Southside Artillery. Jones died in 1886. A year later, the land was sold to James Bellwood. James Bellwood, a Canadian farmer, purchased approximately 1,500 acres of the land, and with the help of his three sons, embarked on one of the most dedicated careers in Virginia's agricultural history. They transformed the poorly producing farm into a historically significant model of modern agricultural success. In 1900, Bellwood imported a pair of elk, a species that had once lived in Virginia, but by the late 1800s had been eradicated in eastern North America. The elk were such a novelty that on weekends, hundreds of visitors would take the Richmond and Petersburg Electric Railway to the Bellwood farm, just to view the elk herd. When the land was purchased by the federal government in 1941, the military agreed to maintain the elk. Descendants of those first elk remain on 22 acres of pasture at the Defense Supply Center Richmond. Their care and feeding are paid for by fundraising efforts of DLA employees and not by federal funds. Gaining notoriety in Virginia for his pioneering methods, Bellwood was chosen to represent the Commonwealth at the Panama Pacific International Exposition held in San Francisco. The Bellwood Farm won two medals of honor, the highest possible award at the expo. In 1941, as part of World War II preparedness efforts, the U.S. military sought to build an inland supply depot. In addition, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers sought a facility for receiving, assembling, recreating, and holding supplies. Two tracts of the Bellwood Farm and several neighboring tracts of land were selected. The first building foundation at the installation was laid in September 1941, and construction proceeded at a rapid pace with one warehouse foundation per week being poured. The installation, originally named the Richmond General Depot, was activated on January 1, 1942, to provide storage and distribution facilities for the Quartermaster Corps, Medical Corps, and the Corps of Engineers. Thirteen large warehouses comprise the core of the installation. Within only a few months, Bellwood's farm was transformed into a small city, the military did preserve some of the farm buildings, including the Bellwood House, which became the Officers Club. The Gregory Family Cemetery behind the house was also preserved, as was pasture for the elk herd. A house that James Bellwood had built for his son and daughter-in-law, Frank and Helen Bellwood, served as Quarters One, the home of the installation's commanding officer, until it was demolished in 2011. In 1998, during the construction of the Child Development Center, another cemetery was uncovered on the property. This unmarked cemetery included the 19th century graves of six African Americans, who were likely slaves or servants working for the families that owned the land. These graves were reinterred nearby. By March 1945, more than 350 million pounds of supplies were being shipped through the depot. The depot employed more than 8,450 employees, which was supplemented by nearly 2,000 German prisoners of war that resided on the installation. Following the war, as shipping and receiving slowed, the depot became more oriented as a storage facility rather than a supply facility. Staff at the installation decreased to 1,041 in 1950. However, America's involvement in the Korean conflict resulted in an increased amount of activity at the depot. Four new large warehouses were built. Throughout the Cold War, the installation's mission expanded to include the management of supply items to military services and certain civilian agencies around the world. 
During the Vietnam War, the depot's business volume rose dramatically. But as the military scaled back operations in Southeast Asia in the late 1960s, activity at the depot once again declined. By 1971, annual procurement had declined significantly. Since that time, the mission of the depot has evolved from storage and supply shipment to administrative oversight of these activities. After undergoing several name changes, the installation is currently known as the Defense Supply Center Richmond. Defense Supply Center Richmond is the home of DLA Aviation. DLA Aviation is a primary level field activity for Defense Logistics Agency, serving as its aviation demand and supply chain manager. DLA Aviation supports more than 1,400 major weapon systems and is the U.S. military's integrated material manager for more than 1.4 million repair parts and operating supply items. DLA Aviation directly supports the warfighter through weapon system material management, industrial retail supply, and strategic acquisition for consumable and depot level repairable materiel. DLA installation support at Richmond provides cultural resource management, which preserves the material culture of the past while supporting the military mission and meeting the requirements of historic preservation laws.